Welcome to the MSI B360 M review. This board is the cheaper end of MSI's motherboards between their Mortar lineup and their Gaming Plus lineup. Hence, it's not part of the Z series as it doesn't have the Z series chipset in it, which allows you to un overclock your unlock processor. But there, those type of motherboards would go well within the $300 range with Wi Fi AC on board and all the bells and whistles you want. Let's start this review off with the unboxing experience. For then, I'll leave it to my past self to show you the unboxing experience. Take a look Ding. at what's inside. So wow! Here, I see black lines. What is this? So here you have the motherboard. Just put it out. Just see what else they give us here. In here, there's the gonna be CD. Yeah, who uses CDs nowadays? Um, you have your M.2 drive, so this is important when you buy an M.2. What? Then here they have like tank cube, so yeah, cool. Tank cube. Then you can paste you this. Got, you got a guitar chip. <laughs> you can, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can paste that in the front of the case. Uh, installation guides. Uh, you have your menu here. We're not gonna refer to that. That's a really thick. These two are important: I/O shield and your SATA cable. Center cable. So oh you get no, it? not SATA. SATA, SATA cable. Next, we will have your I.O. So that also will be left to my past self. For I.O. for this motherboard, you have this PS2, the mouse and keyboard one. You have this old DVI port. You have HDMI. You have two USB 2.0 and then the Ethernet jack. Then you have this USB 3.0 here. You have two USB 3.0 on top of each other. Okay, you have a Type-C and a USB 3.1 Then you have all your, your audio jacks. From the bottom left of your motherboard, you have the front audio connector, the serial port connector, the parallel port connector, two USB 2.0 connectors, front panel connector, which is for buzzers, um, if you still do use that, two SATA 6GB connectors beside each other, a front panel connector for your on and off switch and all the other switches in your front panel. Here's also the diagram if you want to use it uh, because wiring diagrams are really really annoying too. Above that, you have your Thunderbolt add-on card um, connector, which is very strange. That means this system, you could add a Thunderbolt connector to it. I think so. I'm not too sure. Um, four more SATA 6GB connectors. There's two at the bottom and two on top, two beside that. A USB 3.0 connector. A 24-pin connector. Then you have System Fan, system fan 2 connector where you can plug in your one of your system fans too. And then after that you have 4 RAM slots up to 64 GB, so this motherboard supports 64 GB of RAM total. CPU fan connector, CPU power, and right at the bottom of the system, you'll have the system fan connector. This is for your ex rear exhaust fan. Okay, one PC times 16 slot for your GPU, an M.2 slot, which is M key, and another PCIe times one slot. Below that is your wonderful RGB connector and right to the right of that is your TPM connector and to the extreme right of that of the TPM connector is, is your chassis intrusion connector. Yeah, I'm not sure what's that but it's there. And last of all, you have your last PCIe times one connector. Pretty cool for your internal connectors I would say. Alright, so what do I like of the board? So the board, I like that it has an RGB header in this price point. I do like it is a nice black color color scheme. So it doesn't have some orange accents that's going to be really hard to match with with other components they can get off the shelf. I like it how where the motherboard positions is PCIe times one slot. So that it gives you ample space for you to put a two bracket graphics card which is those which is what most graphics cards are. They, took, they do take up two mounting brackets in your casing and then it gives you proper space for you to put gigabit internet or a USB 3.0 uh, ports if you want to do that so you can and yes I do like that the motherboard in this price range have type C so that you can use it to throw in a uh, high speed USB port or some other uh, devices you can use so you can also use it to charge your phone view information from your phone and write it to your disk real fast I can how it just has 5 USB ports at the back which is quite ample for you to put a webcam, your mouse, your keyboard, your some RGB lights, you can even throw a RGB strip behind your monitor or something like that. And there's even enough space for you to put like a USB mic if you're into those type of things. I can how that it has a M.2 slot or so, but then uh, take note about that, it's a M key 
So when you buy a M.2 drive for this motherboard, take note on what sort of key you buy. If you buy a non-M key, that might, that the M.2 drive will turn on, but then you won't be able to read the data of it. I like it how it supports low-end DDR4 RAM, such as 2133MHz, 2400MHz, which is what most RAM run at, and 2666MHz. So those are really good, so if you, are, if you don't have that much money to spend on 3200MHz RAM, you can still get this lower-end RAM that you can use. I also like the position of the CMOS battery, so if you do mess up the system somehow, even though you don't have overclocking capabilities, uh, you can just pull out the battery really simple without having to pull out your graphics card. That's a really nice plus. I also like the BIOS, it's really easy to navigate. You can use your keyboard, you can use your mouse. It's really simple to use. The, bad, the things that I really, really hate about the motherboard is that I wish, come on, like, can they just throw a small amount of RGB at the side of the motherboard? <laughs> My AMD motherboard review that you should check out here um, has RGB at the side of the motherboard and they're both around the same price range. So like, can they just throw in one small strip to make it go well to light up your build just a bit more, you know? I hate the weird, I also hate the weird placements of the internal SATA connectors. Like, why do you want to put them straight up? Can't you just have a normal banks of uh, SATA connectors so that it's really easy to cable manage? Come on MSI, please, can you just do that? I also really hate that there's a lack of uh, fan hitters on the motherboards, which is really annoying because if your case has more than three fans, you are done for because there's only two fan hitters. So you might need to buy a splitter, but then the splitter, you don't know whether if it's a low quality splitter that's gonna spoil or fry that pot that drawing too much amps or maybe that you have to buy uh, or we can just run it off the PS2 at max speed which is what I have to deal with now because my motherboard does not support more than two fan hitters so at least give us three or four that will be very nice okay uh, overall I find this motherboard is a really good motherboard it's a bang for the buck but then if you want to buy this you have to take a note of a few things number one is that your processor is an 8 gen and above with an LGA1151 socket do not buy a 7 gen processor as not really everything will work. It's not advisable. The manufacturer doesn't even state they should run that. But don't ever buy a 7 gen processor with a 8 gen and above socket and motherboard. Okay, the second one is so when you're getting an M.2, I said this, make sure it's an M key. I really really want to tell you guys that I, I made a mistake of buying an M.2 drive that does not have an M key so I just ended up uh, losing money on that because I have to sell it and I do not know if it works so I sold it off at a really low price and the last thing is do not drop the CPU into your motherboard socket I have not done that I don't intend to do that and it's really bad to your motherboard because it will basically total it out so you'll lose everything on that motherboard because the socket is if the socket pins are bent it's a goner. So overall, this is a really good budget motherboard by MSI for the Intel users. As long as you have nothing to do with a full RGB build, just like maybe an office computer or something, they're just gonna tuck underneath the desk and never see it again. But if you have the right type of motherboard that supports an M80X motherboard and you have a bit of money to throw at your, uh, your motherboard, you might as well go for the mortar version of this chipset because that gives you another PCIe x 16 slot so you can run uh, Crossfire for AMD platforms or SLI with the new RTX cards as long as you have a processor that doesn't bottleneck. So if you guys enjoyed this review, always remember to give it a thumbs up, a like and a share. Um, I'll be uploading videos uh, weekly from now on with tank videos weekly as you will probably already can tell. In the recent uploads, is every week. We're 9 o'clock every day, GMT 8 time, uh, Singapore time. So yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace out.